Warren Buffett, everyone knows him as the god of investing. Whatever he says, you listen. Why, you ask? When a man drinks more coke than the amount of rice you eat every day and still get to live to almost 90 years old, you better listen to him. Jokes aside, Warren Buffett has been telling us to invest in index funds and for most people, that's the best thing to do. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. In this video, I'll be sharing 5 ETFs which you can invest in right now. These ETFs will forever be in demand, guaranteeing that you will never lose money as long as you hold them over the long term. On top of that, some of these ETFs will even outperform Warren Buffett himself. That's a lot to talk about, so let's start right now. So what is an index fund? An index fund is just a group of stocks representing a certain sector, like a group of United States stocks, a group of technology stocks, and so on. Here are the benefits of an index fund. First, because an index fund contains so many stocks that it is so diversified, you won't make the mistake of choosing the wrong stock. And second, an index fund auto rebalances itself, so you don't have to actively manage your portfolio. You don't have to worry about timing the market, and because of that, you will be consistently in the market. As we all know, time in the market always beats timing the market. And third, an index fund has extremely low fees compared to all the other actively managed funds out there. Anyway, how low of a fee are we talking about? An index fund fee can be as low as 0.1% compared to an actively managed fund which charges at least 1% or more. Which by the way, a report found out that over 9 in 10 actively managed funds couldn't even beat the market over long periods of time. The first one on this list is very relevant to recent times and that is the healthcare ETF, ticker symbol IUHC. IUHC is a group of healthcare stocks in the United States. It is very similar to Vanguard's healthcare ETF, VHT. However, do note that while Vanguard's ETF has 432 stocks, IUHC only has 62 stocks. The reason I prefer IUHC is because it's an Ireland domestic ETF, which means that instead of being taxed 30% on your dividends, you are only taxed 15%. The ETF gets to keep and reinvest more of the dividends. Now, as you can see, the fund has 29% pharmaceuticals, 24% healthcare equipment, 17% biotech. It holds a lot of the company which you have heard of, like Johnson & Johnson, United Health Group and Pfizer. Now, the downside of healthcare ETF is that most of the companies will face government regulations. And this healthcare ETF contains a lot of biotechnology companies, which are known to be very volatile. But even so, it has managed to deliver an average return of 10% per year. The fees for IUHC is 0.15% compared to other healthcare mutual funds like Fidelity's FSMX. 0.71% expense ratio or FACDX 1.02% I feel that healthcare ETF will be a very safe investment because healthcare will always be in demand. People will always get sick and people will always need medication and medical equipment, especially during pandemic times like right now. Just like this video, we should always need a help to tap the like button to help support the channel. Besides that, there are lots of positive trends going on for the healthcare ETF like aging population, people living longer with chronic diseases, diabetes, obesity, and so on. And yes, I know that these are not positive news when these are all becoming worse, but it is positive news for the ETF. You know what I mean. Next on my list, I have the Information Technology ETF, ticker symbol IUIT. Now, IUIT tracks the technology sector in the United States. It is very similar to Vanguard's Technology ETF, VGT. And even the performance is very similar. However, do note that while Vanguard's ETF has 334 stocks, IUIT only has 75 stocks. Same same but different. Again, the reason I prefer IUIT is because it is an Ireland domestic fund, which means that you get tax lesser 15% on your dividends. Now, even though this ETF has so many stocks, the top 10 stocks like Microsoft, Apple, Visa, Mastercard, have a total weightage of almost 70% in the ETF. And because of that, these 10 stocks will move the ETF by quite a lot. And I'm talking like, I like to move it, move it, kind of move. Because when the pandemic hits, when everyone was losing their jobs, businesses were shutting down, GDPs were at all-time lows, these few stocks actually helped the ETF to recover back to pre-pandemic levels. The main reason is that these companies have really strong balance sheet and they are able to handle short-term losses 
and as a result, they will recover very fast. As for the performance, tech ETF has been delivering a small average of just 21% return every year. Really small. Jokes aside, this ETF has consistently outperformed the S&P 500 and even Warren Buffett's company over the years. The fees for IUIT is at a low fee of just 0.15%. As I've mentioned a lot of times in my previous videos, the technology sector will perform really well in the future as tech is becoming more and more relevant in our lives. Like you see, everything around us is technology like laptops, smart cars, smartphones, smartwatches and it is only going to improve from here on. Next on our list, we have the Consumer Discretionary ETF, ticker symbol IUCD. Now, IUCD tracks the consumer discretionary sector in the United States. What consumer discretionary means is non-essential goods, stuff which people spend on only when they have money, like high-end apparel, entertainment, leisure activities, and cars. Kind of like what Singaporeans think of artists, non-essential. They say one, not I say one. Jokes aside, IUCD is the Ireland domestic version of the Vanguard's Consumer Discretionary ETF, VCR. But this ETF only has 66 stocks, while Vanguard's has 296 stocks. But the performance is quite similar. As you can see, this ETF has lots of brand names which we like to spend money on when we are feeling rich, like McDonald's, Nike, Starbucks. Not me though, I can't even afford to order sotong when eating nasi padang. Unlike consumer staples, which are essential goods, consumer discretionary companies tend to do well when the economy is strong and when everyone has money to spend. In fact, the ETF has been delivering an average of 11% since inception. Even though right now, there's a recession when everyone is poor, this ETF has already outperformed the S&P 500. I guess not everyone is as poor as we thought then. As for the fees, it is 0.15%, same as the other ETF in this list. So here's what I think, we won't be in recession forever, like Wakanda forever. No? I will stop. And when the recession is over, there will be more demand for discretionary items as people are more willing to spend. And I foresee that this sector will do really well going forward. Next, we have the real estate ETF, ticker symbol IDUP. IDUP holds a group of real estate stocks in the United States. And again, it's an Ireland domestic ETF. Its Vanguard's counterpart is the VNQ. Vanguard has 183 stocks while IDUP has 117 stocks. Its holdings are well diversified among specialty, industrial and office REITs, residential REITs, retail REITs, hotels and so on. Now, there's a special part about real estate ETF or any dividend stocks in general. is that unlike all the other growth stocks which I've mentioned just now, dividend investors do not rely on capital appreciation for their income. Instead, they rely on dividends for their income. As a result, stock price movements have little to no effect on dividend investors because they get paid regardless of whether the stock price is going up or whether it is going down. Especially for REITs, which is required to pay out 90% of their taxable income each year. So their dividends are generally higher compared to all the other dividend stocks. IDUB distributes dividend every quarter and has a yield of around 4%. However, ever since the Rorona period, retail REITs haven't been doing so well, and it has affected the performance of this ETF. The annualized return over 10 years is around 6%. It may seem low, but just remember, dividend investors rely on stable dividend for their income rather than on price growth. As for the fees, it is 0.4%, slightly higher than all the other ETFs in this list. In summary, real estate will forever be around. And because REITs often have a few years contract with their tenants, the dividend income will be very stable. Finally, on this list, I have the Utilities ETF, ticker symbol IUUS. IUS tracks the utility sector in United States. It is very similar to Vanguard's Utility ETF, VPU, but IUS is an Ireland domestic ETF. This ETF is not as diversified as all the other ETF because as we can see, it only has 32 stocks. And if we check the sectors, we will see that it is heavily in the electric utility sector at 62% and 32% in the multi-utility sector. The reason I like this ETF is that it will do well in any kind of market conditions, regardless of whether there's a market recession or not. Because these are all basic amenities, people will still use electric, water and gas, unless their name is Tarzan or Ariel. But that's a topic on its own. The other reason this ETF is good is that 
most of the utility companies are actually dividend paying companies and they have steadily increased their dividends throughout the years. However, IUS doesn't distribute dividends. Instead, it accumulates it, meaning that it reinvests its dividends back into itself. And that's actually a good thing because by doing so, it will have the compounding effect automatically. This ETF has an annualized performance of around 7% since inception, has an expense ratio of 0.15%, which is pretty low. Overall, this ETF will be very stable. People will still use electric, water and gas for a very long time. So there's nothing to worry about in terms of growth. So here's my overall thoughts. These are all very solid ETFs and they are all in the sectors which are always in demand. However, there's one ETF which I believe will outperform all the other ETFs in this list and that is John C. Just kidding, the ETF that will outperform all the other ETF will be the tech ETF, IUIT. That's because like I mentioned, technology sector is growing strong and our lives are becoming more and more revolved around technology in the future. And as I prefer growth over stability, I will choose the tech ETF. So what do you guys think? Which ETF do you prefer? Or are there any other better ETF out there which I have not mentioned? Comment down below. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday. See ya!